to see each and every one of you this morning. Uh, looks like you got your clocks set ahead. Uh, yeah. I was struggling this morning getting up, but uh, to God be the glory, for he has given us another day to be alive and a breath, a breath to breathe that he has given us. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning, you know, it's a little hard sometimes for um, most of us to comprehend or to relate to the strength and the fortitude of Jesus as he withstood temptation after temptation in the wilderness. Perhaps this is because we don't have to think far before we come up with examples of times of temptation or testing which we ourselves have experienced, and we recognize our own struggle with it. Indeed, given my own experience, I know his clarity of focus and strength were simply remarkable. Perhaps for Jesus, the time of testing was not finally really about what happened in the wilderness, where he was accompanied by the Holy Spirit and confronted by temptation, it was rather a time apart meant to test him, to get him ready, maybe for what would follow. And so now we find ourselves at the beginning of these 40 days of Lent. This time, too, is not an end in itself. Rather, it comes to us as a time set apart to help us become more and more who God intends for us to be. Amen. What this means for each of us may be different for each of us. For some of us, we may continue in the ancient practice of giving up something for Lent as a way of somehow identifying with Christ's sacrifice on our behalf as Christ <coughs> gave up his life for us on the cross. If you haven't received one of these uh, purple sheets, there are a few in the Narthex area that talks about three things to give up for Lent and then three things to take on for Lent. Amen. Some of those things that are on the, the <clears throat> to give up list include impatience. God's timing is perfect timing. Gossip and negativity. I will see other people in the best possible lives and refrain from being negative. I will also minimize my contact with people who are negative. Or maybe it's refusing God's call. I am here for a reason. I have a purpose to show others the way of Christ. Or maybe it's excuses. I will stop making excuses for things I need to change or things I know I need to do. So I encourage you to grab one of these purple sheets to look at both sides of the list and see what it is that you can give up for Lent. And on the other side is three things that you can take on for Lent. Some of those things include worship every Sunday together and at home. Church does not only happen right here in these four walls. The real church happens on the outside of these walls where we take what we learn and what we hear in Bible study or in Sunday school out of these four walls right here to the community. Yes. Or maybe it's reading your Bible daily, being in daily scripture and reading. And we have a few extra of the Lytton Bible uh, study, or excuse me, Lytton devotionals that are left over in the narthex. So if you haven't grabbed one, grab one of those so that you can be in the Word each and every day. And it doesn't just happen during Lent time. Something and being a devotion in the Word happens each and every day, 365 days of the year. Because how can you grow a relationship with Jesus if you are not in the Word each and every day? Or maybe it's to be still and to know that God is God to rest and keep the Sabbath. Or maybe it's to love. Love others as Christ has loved me, except that I am a child of God. 
So as we journey through this season together, grab one of these perfect printed outs, and if we need extras, I can make some more copies to see how we can journey together in these 40 days of Lent. Because for some, you know, it's kind of a time where it can seem a little sad and depressing when we dress in black and put the new pyramids out of it a different color. But it helps us to remember the time that Jesus spent in the wilderness when he was tempted. For others, you know, like I said, it may be a time of adding something to your life during this 40 days, as in spending more time in worship and prayer. When you're not in church each Sunday, we miss you. We miss you when you're not here. So regular church attendance, I want to see you each Sunday. I miss you so much, and your other brothers and sisters miss you when you're not here. So there's somebody that's missing this morning. Look them out. Find out who's not here. Call them up and see where they were. And by the back, tell me we missed them. And we hope to see them <coughs> next week when we journey, journey together and get together. For others still, maybe you will simply claim more quiet time and space. And by refraining from social media or cleaning out our closets one piece at a time. Whew, social media can be very hard to get. I was just having a conversation with somebody this past week on how we just get so, so consumed by Facebook and Instagram. I'm running out of the different media of apps that they're all out there for social media. Nobody cares what you're doing five minutes each and every day of your life. What should matter is, what are you doing for the Lord? What are you doing for God's church? I want to see those things instead of, well, I just left so-and-so. I just left the grocery store. I just picked up this thing. Nobody cares. You may hate me for that, y'all. But... Let me hear about what God is doing in your life and what God will continue to do when you are faithful and true to his almighty word. I might get fired from today. Still others will find another way to mark these 40 days where we are just want maybe to be alone and meditate and spend time alone with God. The best time for me to spend Along with God, it's when I'm by myself. I like going to Mount Shepherd and being with God in nature. I'm not really an outside person, but I love to go to the cabins where I'm just still. You don't have much cell phone service out there, so I'm not that worried about all the calls and texts or wanting to check. I'm guilty of it as well, brothers and sisters, of checking my Facebook to see what's up and happening or going on in everybody's life. But just to spend time during these 40 days, and the stillness, and listen for the still, small voice of God. Certainly each of these has its place, and yet I do wonder what might, it might mean if we all began by just observing Lent, by first recognizing this as a time for testing, which will prepare us for what will be ours. I wonder what it would mean no matter what we do or not do in these 40 days, if we use this time and these practices to cultivate such attributes as patience or understanding or hope or gratitude or joy or wonder. Oh, I wonder. As I wonder how this plays out among even us, as myself, as a church professional, who sometimes we find ourselves simply swamped by the extra demands that this season can become. Perhaps just the extra preaching that pastors have to do during Lent and the worship leadership on top of what is already going on in churches. Maybe that's just enough of a test. And yet, we are not truly tested if we don't reflect and grow from it, are we? May we also be grateful for the testing we undergo in the weeks to come. Indeed, we come to Easter once more. May we, we recognize that God has used this time to hone and perfect us for whatever life hands us. For whatever it is that God leads us to next. As you consider Jesus' 40 days and nights in the wilderness, 
Is it helpful for you to think about his experience as testing in addition to simply tempting? There are certainly other periods of 40 things, you know, in the Bible, such as the time the people of Israel spent in the wilderness, or the time that Noah and his family spent on the ark. How did God use those times to test God's people? What life experiences of testing help you to better understand Jesus' experience in the wilderness? What will these 40 days, brothers and sisters, look like for you this year? How will you allow hope and patience or understanding of gratitude and joy or wonder to be cultivated in you? What would have happened if Jesus gave into the temptation in the desert? Sin would have grown and salvation would have been denied. We face the type of choice that Jesus faced. Do we choose for God and others, or do we choose for ourselves? Both choices, you know, have effects. The choice for self, sin fuels the growth of the deadly sins. Pride, envy, wrath, sloth, you know them. These attributes fan the flames of sin and help to destroy a sense of morality on an individual and communal level. Through our acts, our admissions, or our approval, sin always weaves its way into the structure of society. And you know, we don't like to talk about sin, do we? <laughs> Evil can grow beyond the power of the individual to control it. At that point, we can speak of social sin. However, one choice for others can help tear down social sin. One choice for good can help change the world. The desert choice of Jesus made that hope a reality for us. What he defined, excuse me, denied the devil's sense of Messiah, he took one more step to reveal himself as God's Messiah and our Savior. Jesus was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, praying as Jesus taught us, saying, and lead us not into temptation. It happened to Jesus. Why teach us to pray for it not to happen? I almost hear Jesus saying, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. And yet I'm stuck on him being led by the Spirit. And I try to find a practice that will cause me to feel led by the Spirit and not try to take on the things that others are doing. Yes. What's yes. the Spirit leading me to do? Sometimes we don't listen. To the Spirit of Christ. What is the Spirit leading you to do? Not what your friends are doing, but the Spirit. Why? Because man shall not live on bread alone. The everyday grind of our lives, the stop by the grocery store after work, to get the homework done, followed by the bath time and then bedtime so that you can have 15 minutes of reading a book while maybe putting the children or the grandchildren to bed or putting the laundry and the laundry, washing machine or the dryer, and then you fall fast asleep. You know, that just doesn't feed us. We need more, don't we? Amen. I wonder if that's why Jesus mm -hmm. told us to pray. Mm -hmm. Give us this day our daily bread. We have 40 days 
this season of Lent? What if we found a practice that would help us to discern what feeds us? What feeds our minds and our bodies and our spirits? And how about this question? If we let the Spirit lead us, will the Spirit lead us to our daily bread? Will the Spirit lead us if our desert was the suburbs? Will the Spirit lead us while being tempted, even if we're driving in the desert in our minivan? Will the Spirit lead us? <laughs> I think the answer is yes. Do we want to be led by the Spirit, though? Yeah, yeah. I say we need to give it a try. Yeah. Lent, brothers and sisters, is a journey. Mm -hmm. A journey toward the cross mm -hmm. and towards a tomb. And the mysterious, unending joy of those who found the end of two. So what is it going to be this season of Lent? Are we willing to be led by the Spirit of the Almighty? To truly let go and let God lead. Yes, this season can be a little gloomy, can be a little rough. But did Jesus make it that way? Did he say that everything was going to be perfect? And we live in a world that's not perfect. I am by no means perfect, and you are not perfect. Jesus is perfect. No flaws, no no ends. <coughs> May this season of Lent be a reminder to you in your lives to truly to listen to the Spirit and God's calling. I think we'll be blown away. Yeah. By trusting and obeying. But one day every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess yes, that yes, Jesus Christ yes, is yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. It's sometimes hard for us to understand the season of Lent. And why our Savior had to be crucified on the cross. But I believe that he did it yes. so that I could have life. Amen. And that all of my brothers and sisters yes. could have life. Yes. And that we could have it more abundantly. Yes. But if just we just see Jesus as our friend yes. and lean on him through it all. Yes. I think that's what it's all about. Yes. Yes. And that we can have a place to come and worship. Worship the Almighty God. But the true worship, you had to start here. But it happens as soon as those doors are opened up and we go outside. Yes. Woo! And then we take what has happened here in this place, the love and the words, and take it to the community. Yes. And each person that we come in contact yes. with. And tell them about what's going on here at St. Luke. Yeah. That's the important part. Yes. Amen. Amen. That is the important part. You know what has, has been said? <clears throat> the gossip don't happen in the parking lot. And it don't happen when you get home either. <laughs> but you take, take the gossip of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Almighty, <clears throat> out into the parking lot. Yeah. And pass it on to each other. Take it to your cars and take it to your homes, take it to your work, take it to your schools, take it to the ends of the earth and proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. 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 I pray that you'll be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you know that I love you. And that I can never love you as much as Jesus Christ loves you. Amen. As we journey together, what is it that you're gonna? Maybe it's not. Maybe you're not gonna give up anything this Lent. 
But maybe we want to think differently and give into something, you know, whether that is more being in a word or using nice words and thinking about those things that we say to other people and not hurting, but using helpful words that are going to edify and build somebody up. What is it going to be? And I want to hear about it. And I am going to have a, a celebration on that Sunday morning where we join together and worship and celebrate the risen King. But this time, yeah, it's a little sad. It can be a little depressing. But we're on this journey together as we're walking alongside Jesus in the wilderness. Ready to celebrate in that communion Good Friday, and on that third day, when they removed that stone and realized he's not here, for he is alive. He has risen from the dead, and that is a story we got to tell. We got to tell him. Thanks be to God. For loving me as a child of God, no matter what, and forgiving me, and waking me up each and every day, so that I can share that love with everyone. I don't think that God's love is judgmental. I don't think it's rude or hateful either. It's a love that is for all. All that would truly seek and worship Him yes. each and every day of their life. Yes. But that's the story to tell now. Yes. Would you go with me and share that love Amen. and share those words with everybody? Yes. Lord is counting on you. Yes, yes. Not finished with you yet. Let Him continue to use you for the kingdom. Maybe there's something that's on your heart today that you just need to give it up to God. Just need to give it up to God at the altar this morning. Don't you know that the altar is always open for you? Something that you maybe have been struggling with. Something that you need to let go of and let God take it from you. For He can take it all. Yes, He can. Take all your burdens away from you. He'll take them away. If there's anybody that feels led this morning to come and give it up, come, will you? Come and leave it. Leave it all behind. And walk out of this place knowing that it's gone. Take it with you. The love of Jesus with you. You can't get rid of it. It's going to stick to you. And I hope and pray that you feel the love in this church and that we can continue to love on each other. Amen. You know, it's, it is nice when you receive a card or a phone call or a text from somebody in the church just to let them know that you're thinking about them and you're praying for them. But we're not promised tomorrow. We have to live every day to the fullest. And it's my mission, and I feel that I am called by God try to treat each and every person the way that I want to be treated. It's hard when you have those people that want to hate on you. But I try to do my best and give them a smile and say, well, I'm, a I'm sorry that's the way you feel. But just know I'll be thinking and praying for you. I'm going to love that person and pray that I can love that person. No matter how hard it is, just the way 
that God would want me to love her. 